the curve modifier. Uh, it's similar to the displace uh, modifier, but I think the curve is really amazing. Um, it there's just a lot of modeling problems, especially with architecture and buildings or mechanical things, anything that's like non-living, but even with living things too, that the curve modifier really solves. I'll go ahead and turn this block into a wall real quick. Um, just a real simple kind of deal here. Flatten it up a little bit. Oops. Uh, if you see what I'm doing here, um, I don't really use the um, 3D transform anymore because what I've discovered is that you can quickly gesture which direction you want to scale or move something by clicking down the middle mouse button. And then once you have it figured out um, which, uh, which direction or axis you want to go down, uh, then you just let go of it and it will stay constrained to that. And this is a huge time saver because before I would just, you know, spend a lot of time basically um, looking down at the keyboard. Do I need to hit Z? Do I need to hit X? Do I need to hit Y? And no, this is much more intuitive. So I don't even I don't even bother with um, keeping the transform on anymore anymore. See it there. I used to use it. No need for it. It just gets in the way now. Uh, but anyway, back to the curve modifier. Here's like a basic wall, and I'll go ahead and uh, divide it a couple of times so you can see the effects. I'm just loop cutting here, another really great quick thing. Um, but anyway, I'm going to add the modifier, the curve modifier to this wall and I'll put my 3D cursor here and you can create any kind of curve and it will your mesh will respond to it but I'm just gonna make a circle scale that circle up and then I'll go over here and I'll just name it and I'll call it uh, I don't know my wall circle <laughs> whatever anyway that's so I can um, click on my wall and then under the modifier just added the curve modifier uh, you select the object which is basically the curve that you want it to respond to and uh, then from there you just um, uh, however you move your object uh, responds to that circle and this is looking really crappy. This is not getting across my point well at all. There we go. But anyway, uh, yeah. And then so you can change your mesh and it will respond to that to the curve or you can change the curve itself uh, in whatever way. All right. Uh, let me show you one more quick example of it. Um, of how awesome the uh, curve deform modifier is. Grab that using my sweet middle mouse click. And let me add on here a bevel. Here's another really great trick. Um, if you're trying to, if you want to make geometry look smoother and more professional, basically, but at the same time, uh, not have to make a million loop cuts or edges. If you add a bevel and then your subdivision surface, um, you can basically control the uh, smoothness uh, of your edges. And I mean, it doesn't look that impressive on this, but like, say you have an entire building that you've made with doors and window sills and all that stuff. Um, of course, as soon as you add your um, your uh, uh, subdivision modifier, it all turns to goop. But if you have a bevel a bevel modifier under there first, it's going to help it retain its its structure and its shape there, which is really sweet. But um, I'm going to 
I am going to add a loop real quick right here because that's looking a little weird. And one down here. Uh, put that and then get out of edit mode by hitting tab. And I'm going to make this thing fatter, scale it this way. So it'll be a little bit more like a looking at it like that. Um, let's see. I do want it subdivided a few more times so you can see the effect that this curve I'm going to use. All right, that's good enough. Well, basically, um, how I overcame my uh, train trestle problem uh, after trying a million different things that weren't working out. Um, uh, if you just add a curve here, Shift A, curve, let's make it Bezier. I'll hit Z, go into wireframe mode so I can see what's going on, rotate this around, hit tab, grab one point of it, grab it down to the end, grab it down further, get out tab mode, and then just, oops grab it and move it over here. Okay, so I basically had this long train track bridge thing going on uh, and I wanted it to curve and be look something cool like uh, on Spirited Away like out in the middle of the ocean. Um, so what I'm going to do is hit E to extrude these points on this curve and then I'm going to grab these handles just to make them a little more smooth whatever help illustrate my point here with the alright that's uh, good enough to uh, express my point pretty much but anyway watch this um, instead of wasting your life you know trying to figure out you know, sit there in edit mode, um, grabbing individual, um, you know, gra grabbing individual uh, vertices and loops and things and rotating them and trying to get how you want. You can just, you create your curve over here, and I'm going to name it just so I don't get confused. I'll call it my bridge curve. And then I'm going to go over to my little bridge thing. I'll, I'll scale that upward a little more. Grab it. And then I'm going to add the curve to form and object to apply it to, my bridge curve. And it looks all crazy here because it's far away, but it updates it live as you as you move the thing so if you pretty much move it right over it it goes exactly like it it's just really awesome uh, see how it conforms like that super awesome thing to do and then also if you're like well I'm not too happy with that you just go back to the actual curve and any changes you make with that uh, changes that or you can go back and edit the geometry um, and that will also live update look at that that is badass alright so that's the curve to form uh, it can save you a lot of time and uh, definitely uh, make doing stuff in blender a lot cooler um, check you later